Hey, so today I'll show you how to add a 3D model to a website using 3.js. Now, one of the most compelling reasons to use 3.js and 3D JavaScript in general is that it's a marriage of the power and flexibility of the open web combined with cutting-edge graphical features. Something that's difficult or even outright impossible to build using some other platform like Unity can be pretty straightforward in JavaScript and HTML. So for this tutorial, we'll be using 3.js, which, if you're watching for the first time, is a great JavaScript 3D library for wrapping WebGL. We've already covered basic setup and initialization in a previous tutorial, so definitely check those out for more information, and we've also covered model loading. The reason I mention this is because I'll kind of gloss over those parts pretty quickly, uh, since it's covered by other tutorials. Anyway, we'll start with the same initialization code as the first project. I'll just go over quickly what this does. As you can see here, we instantiate 3.js, create a camera and a few lights, nothing that wasn't already covered previously. If I were to run this as is, we'd just see an empty plane sitting on a black background. Now we'll start integrating the 3D onto the page, starting with just adding a simple 3D model to the website using the GLTF loader. What I'm going to do is head over to my favorite 3D model site, Sketchfab, and we'll search for something decent to show. I was watching that new Picard show recently, so I've kind of got Star Trek on the brain. Let's grab a nice model of the Enterprise. Just a quick couple of lines should load this. We just need to instantiate a loader, set the path, and now if we go and load that up in the browser, exactly what we expected to see, the Enterprise. To integrate this onto the web page is pretty easy. 3.js just operates on a canvas element on the page itself. If you check DevTools here, you can see the structure of the page and see that it's a DOM element that's being rendered to. This is an important point. The canvas that 3.js uses is just another element in the DOM tree, another element on the page like text or images. So for example, if I were to create a small web page, let's go and create a really quick one. We'll just make a title section here and some text and images below. In the title section, I'm going to put some text and then on the right, we'll have a square space that we'll fill in with a 3D model. This is all just kind of fake garbage. In reality, this can be structured any way you like, but this is just an example. Anyway, here's what I ended up with. I've got this title section and a bunch of garbage text and images below. Looks kind of like a real website. So now I go back into the initialization code here, and instead of appending the new canvas element to the body, we use get element by ID and append the canvas element in another place in the DOM tree. When we load this up, we've got the model showing up here in this little window instead. Pretty neat. So here's a slight catch. If let's say I add background color to this page or even a background image, this little model shows up with a black background. We can get it to integrate more seamlessly by changing the initialization parameters a bit. If you look at the docs for WebGL renderer, you'll notice that there's an alpha parameter that defaults to false. Tweaking this and setting it to true, so we'll modify the code here and set this to true, now loading this in the browser yields a model that now blends on top of whatever was in the background of the page. The last thing is that we can listen for events on the page and add a bit of interactivity, either passively or actively. Let's modify the code a bit to animate when the user scrolls the page. So in the code here, we'll make the uh, 3.js canvas part of the header, and we'll make it a sticky header, so as you scroll the page, it stays at the top. That's pretty easy with a few small CSS changes. The next change is we'll define an event handler using window.addEventListener for the scroll event. There's some good documentation here on the Mozilla site, but uh, essentially we just want to listen for input events and respond by notifying the 3.js app. We'll do that by calling app.onscroll with the position of the scroll bar. Now you can do anything in here. For example, we can blend between two different camera positions for two different scenes. So what I've done here is I've defined two different scenes at two different positions, and we'll linearly interpolate between the two scenes using the normalized scroll position. Now, when we scroll the page, the 3D scene sticks to the top, but animates based on the page scroll position. And of course, you can go a lot further. You can look at the mouse position, you can rotate things, you can do whatever you want, really. It doesn't matter. That about covers the basics of embedding 3D on a website using 3.js. Hope you all enjoyed this. Remember to like and subscribe, and of course, let me know if you have any suggestions on future tutorials or areas that you'd like to see explored more in depth, and I'll add them to my roadmap. Like always, code is available on GitHub, grab it, fork it, do whatever you want, it's yours to play with, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.